<laughs> That's good English. Okay, we are recording now. Yes, sure are. Okay, cool. Great. We started talking about sound waves. Ah, I'm excited. Uh, I don't know if you guys are excited. I hope this is not too bright. It's pretty much sunny outside, but that's okay. So let's put this here and let's scooch this over just a little bit. There we go. Is that good? Yeah, there we go. So we were talking about sound waves. This was a long time ago because you guys were coming into school for several days a week. We, we, we took some time off and then a lot of conflict, yada, yada. But anyway, let's not worry about that, but let's just kind of have a quick review of, of where we were. Okay, we talked about sound waves. Okay, and we talked specifically for sound a couple of things. We said sound waves have, have frequencies between 20 and 20,000 hertz. That's kind of the range of, of, of frequencies that we have. Okay, and um, we also talked in that context about the speed of sound. Okay, and for the speed of sound, the speed. Um, is about 343 meters per second, okay? And I gave you guys kind of the, the ballpark idea that this is about a third of a kilometer per second. So if you hear uh, thunder, for example, and you count the seconds, you divide by three afterwards, you know how many kilometers away the lightning struck would be kind of that explanation because that number is really, really close to this. Okay, now, now a couple things about that. So this is kind of the range, and we can quickly use that information to find the wavelength. We, we did that as well, because there's a relationship connecting the three, and all of you love the idioten dreiecks. I'm gonna do it over here. Oh yeah, you betcha, huh? So we've got V, F, and lambda. That's really important for understanding how to work with these things. If you know V, you know F, you can find lambda. So for example, if we looked at the shortest, uh, sorry, the smallest wavelength, the smallest wavelength is right, uh, sorry, smallest frequency is 20 Hertz, we could find the associated uh, wavelength of that sound, okay? Lambda is, V divided by F, and I don't remember if we did this last time, but 343 meters per second, I think we did, divided by 20 hertz is uh, about 17 meters. Okay, so the, the smallest wave, uh, frequency has a wavelength of 17 meters. Okay, so this is uh, then, of course, is that the minimum wavelength for sound or the maximum wavelength? I'm just gonna put a subscript on here. Is that minimum or maximum? Minimum. Jakob said minimum. Yeah. Maximum. Oh, Max. Maximum. Yeah, thanks yeah. Jacob for, for throwing yourself onto that hand grenade. So it's, it's, the, it's actually the maximum. The reason being because the frequencies on the bottom, the, the lowest frequency corresponds to the longest wavelength. That's the longest wavelength. So this would be max lambda. Now, what I mean by lambda max means for sound. Okay, so specifically, of course, we can have uh, similar waves as sound waves, but they wouldn't be called sound really because we can't hear them because this is the range of, of human hearing. So let's look kind of at lambda minimum. Oh, we can do it this way. So F min, that makes sense. And then V sound divided by F max would be the minimum wavelength for audible sound. And we would have 343 meters per second still for our uh, speed. And then we would have our frequency, which would be 20,000 hertz, okay, good, and that would be uh, 0.017 meters, okay, and that's just a little bit more than a centimeter, so the sound waves that you can hear with your ears, well, what other part would you use, I guess, with your ears, are, are vary in length between about 1.7 centimeters 
in about 17 meters or about two centimeters and 20, 20 meters if you wanna think about it that way. So it's a pretty broad range for what you can hear with your ears. But there are some waves, of course, that have uh, pitches that are low, uh, sorry, that are, have frequencies that are lower or frequencies that are higher, okay? Another word for higher or beyond, okay? And we use this, for example, for soccer fans. Some soccer fans are just fans, and then some soccer fans are beyond fans. And what do we call those people? Ultra fans. Ultra fans. They're ultras, exactly. So an ultra, uh, so for, for sound, there's, this is sound. We just talked about that, right? Right, 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 that's sound. So then we also have ultrasound. Okay, you might have heard that before. Okay, so ultrasound you cannot hear with your ear because it has a frequency that's greater than 20,000 hertz. Okay, so those are ultrasound waves and, and you, they're, they're very useful in medicine. We can use those to um, send these waves uh, through soft tissue okay and 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 see for example if you have an injury uh or internal injury or you have a pregnancy that you want to look at the fetus you can use ultrasound for this okay so you can look inside inside basically a body is one technique that people use you've seen x-rays but x-rays only work for like hard tissue like bones and ultrasound you can use for soft tissue okay so if you want to see for example a fetus in in in, in utero you can you can use ultrasound Okay, or you have some kind of injury, you want to look at somebody's kidney and see if there's kidney stones, you could use ultrasound for that. Okay, so those are kind of different, different things that, that we have there, ultrasound. Now, a little while ago, I did a little bit of a, hmm, uh, uh, not screw up is a little bit too strong of a word, but I, I, I meant to say frequency, and I said pitch. Okay, and... Uh, where do we use the word pitch? Uh, in music. In music, that's right. So in music, we use pitch. So we say, for example, you sing high or you sing low. Okay, that's a different pitch of voice. Okay, and it basically refers to the um, overall frequency of the tone. So pitch is, if you want to think about pitch, of uh, about the same thing as frequency in a uh, frequency of a tone, then that's okay. Okay. All right. So we have a high pitch tone and a low pitch tone. They have different frequencies. Okay. Now it's a little bit more complicated than that. So we'll add an add, add a, a little bit to that. But for now. Um, we'll tell you, for example, that middle C has a frequency of 256 hertz. Okay. And uh, if you go beyond that, you go one octave. So hang on. Uh, middle C um, is, is that C... How do we label that? There's got like be anybody a piano player who knows how to do that? Like middle C is C2 or C3 or C0 or something, or how does that work? Anybody know? Heard of that. Okay, nobody knows. All right. So we're gonna call it one higher C. Okay. So if you go a C higher than middle C, so if you're in the keyboard on the piano. You're hitting middle C and then you scooch over basically um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven uh, uh, white um, keys. Then you get to the one higher C. Its frequency is 512 hertz. Double. Okay. What do you notice about the C that is one octave higher? It has double the frequency. Double the frequency, exactly. So if we go to then, I don't know if it's called high C, but we'll just pretend. But it's basically too higher. You can kind of ex you can kind of guess what its frequency would be. Ah, oh, somebody screwed this up. One thousand twenty-four. Oh, it is one thousand twenty-four. You're correct. 
it is 1,024. So uh, an octave refers to actually doubling the frequency. So if you go from middle C to one higher, you double it to 512, you double it to 1,024, then you're one higher. And of course, it also works the other direction. I foolishly did not leave room here for the one lower C, but we can fearlessly write it over here, okay? So there are two other C's on that, on that keyboard, and you can kind of assume that those frequencies would be, half of this is, Okay. 128, uh, 28. 128, and then below that would be 64, and so on. Interestingly, if you keep going lower there, what are you gonna get to? Half of 64 is? 32. 32, half of that is? 16. 16. What kind of sound is that? Can we hear that? No. No, we can't hear that anymore, but we would get eventually down to one. That was my point, 16, 8, 4, 2, 1. Now, those Cs you wouldn't be able to hear. These two you'd still be able to hear, but 64 is already pretty low. From 16 hertz and below, would that be called infrasound, kind of like the colors? Oh, that's that's a good question. Uh, I think it is. I'm not actually not 100% sure, but I think it is called infrasound. Hmm. Cool. Great. So we've got that kind of stuff kind of figured out here. Um, I'm going to take a picture of that there. And then I'm gonna, alrighty. Then I'm gonna post that later for you. And then we're gonna talk specifically about how sound uh, music is created because that's fun, I think. Or we can talk about seismic waves. That's fun too. Geez, there's good topics in this, in this book. This is kind of a good transition right now to kind of um, point this out. Not that that is a good book, but. Um, I've posted some assignments for you, okay? And this should take us to the end of the school year in terms of book assignments. I think I posted five more assignments. So it was about one assignment a week, which I hope is not too overwhelming, two pages each week to look at. And, and I'll cut, come along and, and, and still do a session a week to answer questions, introduce topics, kind of talk about things a little more in detail um, and those kind of things. But just so you have that on your radar, that there are some things on um, on Google Classroom. Okay, Felix is here. Hi, Felix. And anybody else joined the group recently that I didn't see yet? No. So, here we go. Let's talk about music and specifically what I'd like to talk about is uh, music created by string instruments. Okay, so you've all seen a guitar or a, um, a piano, violin. Here's a simplistic model of what a string on a, on, a, on a guitar looks like. You have a certain length here, obviously, right? Okay, and let's just kind of describe what we know. Okay, so what I mean by that is you've all had this experience. So you have a guitar string, you have a certain length of string. Okay, and, and, and um, there are certain things that affect the pitch. Okay, and from your experience, what is the pitch affected by? Um, the shorter the length is, the higher the pitch is. Okay, so if L goes down, right, pitch goes up. Did I say that correctly? I think so. Yes. Okay, good. What else we got? Uh, mass per meter also. I think. Okay, so uh, so why are you saying that? I can you can you like, tell me from your experience what shows that on an actual guitar, what is that concept that you're referring to? Well, if a string is thicker, it can't vibrate as fast because Don't, don't get ahead of it, just describe, don't explain. So you're saying if you have a thicker string, so guitars, for example, will have nylon strings, and then sometimes some strings are made up like metal. Mm -hmm. 
right? Yes. Okay, or even on a piano, if you look inside a piano, there are some bass strings that are made up of these like thick material, right? Mm -hmm. So you, there's, there's basically a how mass intense the material is, or if we want to say it this way, how much mass per length there is, okay? So if you look at the mass density, we I mean, don't really have to understand what that means, but you take the whole mass of the string and divide by the length, that's how, how much mass there is per centimeter, per meter. And just to describe what you just said was, if we have a high density, what happens to the pitch? So the metal string compared to the nylon string has a higher or lower pitch. A lower. A lower pitch. Okay, pitch goes down. It's kind of weird how we, how we and we is me chose this right here, right? But whatever. So we still have one other option to affect the pitch. How else do you affect pitch on a guitar? Tension. Like Tension. So that means you have those twisty things at the end, right? And you're like, oh, this pitch is a little bit off. It's too high or too low, right? So if you turn that thing, it, it makes the string more taut, more, yeah, higher tension. So as you increase the tension in the string, hey, oh, maybe we should be consistent here. Yeah, I think it's good. So let's do this way. Let's go. I'm going to turn this around. The Germans are going to hate me, but oh well. But that way we're consistent and always looking at what happens when you increase something. So if you increase the length, the pitch goes down. If you increase the um, mass density, the pitch goes down. And now let's talk about what happens when you increase the tension. So if you increase the tension in your string, what happens to your pitch? Oh, well. Pitch goes up, right, so pitch goes up. Okay, does that make sense so far? This is just our experience, okay? That makes sense? Okay, so we're gonna now separate those concepts into two different types of concepts, okay? So what I mean by that is, If we change L, what do we mean by that? Okay, we mean by that, that we're taking an existing string like this one, right? And all we're doing is we're taking uh, it and shortening it. And normally for a guitar, the way you do that is um, you, there's basically little bumps underneath this thing, they're called frets, right, right? So you have like a fret right here. Let's just kind of exaggerate how tall the fret is. There's the fret right there, right? It's called the fret. And you push down on it, okay? And now we've shortened the string. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay, now riddle me this. When I do this, I'm changing how much of the string actually has the wave in it right because i'm gonna i'm gonna pluck it here bing. now I'll let go and go i pluck the whole thing bong, bing, bong, bing. okay makes sense all right so what that means is when we do this when we change the the length that we're actually having the wave travel in we're not changing the physical situation of what kind of material the wave is traveling in, just how far it goes. So when we pluck it here now, the wave is only traveling between these points. It's no longer traveling all the way across because we've stopped it from traveling over here. Only bing, this part has the wave in it. This part on the left does not, okay? But the material itself is the same in which the wave is traveling. All right, which means this one where we change the length, 
is distinct from the other two because the other two, what we're doing there is we're really changing the, the material how, how, uh, the, in which the wave is traveling. Here we're changing how much mass there is and here we're changing how tightly it is wound together. Okay, so we're changing the medium here and that means this part right here affects the sound speed in that material. Whereas here, we're not changing the sound speed because it's the same material. Well, how is that possible? Because in both cases, pitch, remember, pitch is kind of like frequency, so F goes down here. Here, F goes up. And here, F goes, uh, sorry, down. So in all three cases, we're affecting the frequency, but here we're doing this by affecting the wave speed because we're changing the material through which the um, wave travels, okay? And that makes sense because F is equal to V over lambda, okay? So we can change, well, we can change the frequency by changing V, right? Aha, here V changes, Here, V does not change. So what must be changing in the top option if it's not V to change F? Lambda. Lambda, exactly. So what we have here is lambda changing in this case, whereas here, we change the frequency by changing the actual wave speed that is traveling inside the material. Okay, so a little bit of a different approach. And the other thing in both cases is actually constant. Okay, so in this case down here for the wave, we're just changing this or we're just changing that. Wavelength would stay the same. And up here, lambda changes, but V would stay the same. And then our change would of course be uh, expressed through that relationship. Okay, that being said, we now know, obviously, that if we increase the tension, well, we've heard the frequency go up, the pitch goes up, right? Well, that can be only true if V increases or decreases when we increase the tension. When there's more tension, V goes up? Is that yes, correct. So this means F goes up in that case. And we wanted to explain that. We could say because the speed, the wave speed has gone up in that case. So when we increase the tension, this causes the, v, the wave speed to increase, and that in turn causes the frequency to increase. On the other hand, if we increase the density of the material, we've heard that the pitch decreases, we've heard that the frequency goes down, which means if you increase the wave um, the, the string uh, density, what must be happening to V in order for that to happen? The wavelength goes down. Uh, the wavelength is unchanged in this case. Oh. So lambda is unchanged. So the only thing that changes when you change the, assuming everything else is state fixed, is uh, M over L. So if M over L increases, causing frequency to go down, this means that the frequency has to be going down. Oops, I'm gonna just kind of, gonna be sort of short on time a little bit because V goes down and vice versa, not vice versa, that don't make no sense here. Up here, assume V is constant, V stays constant. In this case, okay. When we increase the length of the string or, ch or change the length of the string here, whoop, yeah, we affect it. Increase in length, decrease in frequency, which means that must be because lambda is doing what? To get a lower frequency lambda and a longer down. length means lambda must be 
going up. Going up. Okay. So we kind of have a qualitative understanding of, of these ideas now. We're going to get into a quantitative understanding. Hi, Fintan. Um, after, after this, okay, to actually figure out what the frequencies are that certain strings will produce and how they're related. Okay, but that brings us to the end of today. I will stop recording at this point because we're at 30 minutes. And